So I'm really excited to talk to you now about uh, something that I've been working on for the last couple of years. Um, it is called the CARE program. And I have been uh, at the Gene Baker Miller Training Institute for, you know, 15 plus years. And what I really have seen my kind of role here is bringing in the neuroscience of human connection and really bringing it into the theory and trying to integrate that. And um, what I've found is that I'm a very practical person. <laughs> so I don't, you know, I want to, I always want to know, okay, so if I know this, what can I do about it? Right? And so what I'm going to share with you is the basics of what you can do about it. Okay, so I've already uh, talked with you in other lectures about the, you know, what I've identified as um, sort of four very specific pa neural pathways for connection. The smart vagus nerve, uh, which allows you to, when you're in healthy connection, it actually uh, feeds into your stress response system or your autonomic nervous system and actually allows you to feel calm. And it's simply like, it's as simple as I look at your face and I smile, you laugh, eyebrows go up. All of that actually stimulates your smart vagus nerve, which feeds back into your heart and lungs and helps you actually feel, feel better, so, sort of settle down. So relationships can be sort of when they're healthy. I mean, obviously if you had assaulted me at one point, if I'm looking at you, I'm not feeling really comforted, right? But Healthy relationship, it's the, one of the primary ways that healthy relationships help us feel better. We talked about spot theory, social pain overlap theory, and the idea that, um, that in humans and maybe some other mammals that uh, social excluded, when you're kind of cut out of the pack, whether it's through um, one of the many isms that operate around people, um, or e bullying, or even the, the ongoing practice of approaching difference by judging it, which our brains just want to do, right? We, we have to organize things in there, so we want to judge. But what we also do is we judge and we stratify, right? So whatever's, whatever's different about you becomes value-laden, right? So you have dark hair, I have slightly colored blonde hair. Your hair is better than mine. You know, so it's like not just the observation and the judgment, it's what we do about it, right? Every time we do that, there's a hit of pain, right? We get a little jolt in our anterior cingulate gyrus, or we get a little bit of pain. And that's operating sort of 24-7 to often make us feel very uh, uh, agitated. Um, so smart vagus the anterior cingulate gyrus. And then there's something called mirror neurons, which uh, have come about in the last 15 years. And those are essentially uh, uh, systems or networks of nerve cells in our brain that actually, they're, they're set up to help us read the actions, intentions, and feelings of other people. It happens automatically, we don't have to think about it, so it's that immediate sort of feeling. And I always like to do this, and I can do it on camera, because you'll, you'll notice this. What I, what I want you to, just look at my hands, okay? I'm gonna rub them together, and now you're gonna tell me what your hands are feeling like. What do they feel like? Warm and tingly, right? So you have mirror neurons in your parietal lobe, which brings in sensory information. Basically, you're rubbing your hands too. Okay, in the motor region and in the sensation. So you feel it, right? It's automatic. You didn't have to sit there and think, oh, I should rub my hands together, right? And that's what mirror neurons do. They give us a, a, a split second understanding of what people are thinking, feeling, and doing, okay? Um, and obviously, being able to connect with people it, it means having a kind of well developed and accurately coded mirror neuron system. And then finally, the dopamine reward system, which has gotten a lot of press um, because it's, uh, the dopamine reward system is linked up to uh, all drugs of abuse, actually. It's the final common pathway through the dopamine reward system that gets you hooked on it, right? Um, and what, uh, what we've reviewed in other lectures is the dopamine reward system actually initially is set up to be sort of like a carrot on the stick when you do something good for yourself or like when you're an infant and you're getting those hugs and you're being held, um, you're being cooed at, you're being loved. Nurturance in that way actually stimulates dopamine, okay? So one of the problems actually in our culture is the more we then teach kids to separate 
because food will also stimulate the dopamine reward system in infancy, so, you know, sucking on a breast or a bottle. Um, food, water, uh, nurturance. When we start taking nurturance out of the equation and we get these little robotic automatrons, then, in fact, I think we all look for other ways to stimulate dopamine, right? Um, and we turn to the food or we turn to uh, drugs or buying or what have you. So that's just a very quick overview of, you know, these, these four neural pathways for connection that go into my care program. So what the care program is, there's sort of three pieces that kind of come into it. One is relational cultural theory, which um, is a psychological theory that uh, describes human development as being through and toward relationships. So obviously that is a huge part of my bias within this program. The second part is the relational neuroscience, which I just described for you, those four pathways of connection. And the third part is what we now know about neuroplasticity or brain change. And it's very simple what we know about it, which is we have almost inf infinite potential to change, our, literally our central nervous systems, and that really is new information. We're, we're changing moment to moment. As you sit here, you will be a slightly different person when you leave than when you came in. Um, that's how flexible and malleable our nervous systems are. So, uh, and the two premises that the nervous system works on is use it or lose it. So the more you stimulate a pathway, the more uh, the stronger it gets, the more robust it gets. And the, and the other one is neurons that wire together fire together. And for that, what basically what it's saying is that neurons that are firing at the same time build larger networks, neural networks that get that then used. And that usually means a higher level of complexity and often a higher level of efficiency of, uh, you know, sending messages. So those three go into the care program. Um, the first step of the care program there's a res is that you do a relational assessment. Um, and the point of this, it's a 20, 20 question assessment tool that you are going to answer while you are embodying the important relationships in your life. Now, one of the things that's a little bit different than this is than uh, other kind of assessment tools is what I want you to do is be really thinking or the goal of it is, is to see how your relational network is impacting these pathways for connection, right? Their job, it, their job is to help you connect. And so therefore the relationships in your life will shape them. Good relationships will stimulate those pathways toward good healthy relationship, but stressful relationships, right, will do the opposite, okay? So what you wanna do is first get a fairly accurate uh, reading of kind of what your relational web is. So you take um, sort of the ideas to find, you know, any from five to 10 people, it, it, you know, the most prominent people in your life, good, bad, or otherwise, okay? <laughs> and sort of roughly think about what proportion of time you spend with them, okay? So if you have 100% relational time, and it doesn't matter, people always ask me, what if I'm an introvert and I have one hour a week? Then that's your one hour of relational time, fine. If 20 minutes is spent with Susan and 10 minutes with Jack, and you know, you still break that up. It's 100, it, it, it doesn't mean you have to be out in the world in way more relationships. So the first thing you do is we, you, assess those questions, you say, okay, Susan, let me think about times that I've been with Susan, what I feel like when I think of Susan, and there will be questions like, you know, I trust her to X, you know, to pick me up or help me with work, whole series of questions. Um, you'll make then, at the end, re relational uh, safety groups, um, because one of the things that I also noticed that is, is a problem with at least clients that I see, is that when we're teaching relational skills, what happens is we might identify, okay, it's important for you to listen a little more closely or, you know, speak up or, you know, really kind of make a point a little more s strongly or what have you. And they might go leave and go immediately to a bad relationship, try it, come back and say, eh. It was ter terrible. See, I told you, this is just awful and bad at relationships. So you want to be matching up. If you're trying some new skill that you're trying to learn, you want to try it in relationships where there's a reasonable chance that it's actually going to go well, right? So safe, making literally safety groups 
okay? Over time, it allows you, like if you notice, okay, uh, if I have uh, high safety, moderate safety, and low safety, and I'm noticing most of mine are down in that low safety, we're gonna be working on skills, really concrete skills, to bring that up and dilute it with some moderate safety, you know? So dilution is a big uh, part of the program, right, in terms of use it or lose it. If you have half, hard, you know, difficult and half good, then, and then all of a sudden you're able to transform some of these to good, then it shifts the balance of the stimulation on your nervous system, right? So we really want to get that going. So uh, the second part then of, of the care program is to actually measure your care score, which is an assessment of these individual pathways and, and how they're working in your, in your body. So again, it, this now involves, you don't have to do any more sort of assessing of those relationships. What you actually do is some calculations with the scores you already have, and you'll get uh, care numbers that will, and uh, CARE stands for in the CARE program. C is for CALM, which is the functioning, how much the Smart Vegas helps you with your, um, helps you settle down your nervous system and healthy relationship. A is your sense of acceptedness, meaning how included are you and how often do you exclude or include other people. Uh, R is resonance, which speaks to the mirror neuron system. E is energy, which speaks to the extent that your dopamine reward system is attached to relationships. So you get a score for each of those. And then finally, what you do with that, you'll look and see, okay, where, what do I need work on? Um, and for each of those scores, you, there will be a set of exercises that you do. Some of them you'll do on your own, but a number of them you actually are gonna invite other people because really those pathways for connection have to be stimulated for the most part within connection, right? Um, so you're gonna be invited to do some exercises with other people to try to improve not just your care scores, but what they correlate to, which is those pathways for connection. And as you build and get those stronger, what's gonna happen is your relationships are going to feel more secure, more settled, you're going to be healthier, you're going to be happier.